Hello everyone, it's Nadie, and today we'll be testing out the Pat McGrath Mega Mothership Palette. As you beautiful people know, this is about the products and not the people behind them. Any tip you may have with them, please cast it away because this is a channel of positive energy. Okay? Thank you. I myself am just waking up. I have a very, very busy day ahead of me, but what better way to start your day than to play with makeup? Oh my god, I still got bad head and I never even got bad head. So, I know this isn't about the people behind this brand, but oh my god, Pat McGrath is queen. The products really aren't always the best, but just the way that she markets and advertises and like the photos and stuff, it's just a dream. I just love the darkness and the ethereal qualities that they have. It's just so pretty to me. And I was very surprised when they came out with an affordable palette. I mean, that's pretty sad that $80 is affordable. But when her normal palettes are well over $100, I guess $78 seems pretty cheap. But let me take a look at what this looks like. Oh my. Okay, so it definitely isn't quite luxe like how her normal palettes are. Typically, they're plastic. They come with a really, really pretty packaging. Not that this isn't pretty, but it definitely isn't quite what we're used to with Pat McGrath. Still gorgeous, though. I guess this is technically the Mothership Mega Celestial Divinity Eyeshadow shadow palette. And I'm gonna quick hop our little titties over to the Sephora website. This retails for $78 and it has almost a 5 out of 5 star rating? Shit. Of course, we don't really know if we can trust Sephora. They can be a shady bitch, but it looks like they have no 1 star reviews. It's scattered in between 3, 4, and 5 stars with so many 5 star reviews. Like, damn. Just for shits and giggles, let's go ahead and look at the lowest reviews, which say beautiful packaging, no way. They say yes, there are repeat shades from the Star Wars palette, which Pat McGrath is very upfront about. And the pan sizes are smaller, which again, she did say. But they still say that for $78, the 18 shadows that you get are beautiful quality. It's just the packaging that they think is kind of garbage. I mean, I am going to be honest, and it doesn't really look that good of quality. Like, this is just a sticker that's kind of like coming off the front. And that's kind of weird for Pat McGrath. Especially because still, this is almost an $80 palette. And so the packaging really shouldn't suffer. Like, that is honestly one of the cheapest parts to palettes. Next person says, overall, it's just okay. Actually, so does the next person. It's literally just okay. Five stars say the palette is beyond pretty. It's a great sampling of her palettes. Most gorgeous palette ever. The packaging is really cute. I don't know. A lot of people seem to be torn between thinking this is pretty and thinking it's hideous. I mean, I don't think it's ugly. I just don't think it's luxe. Let's open it up. Of course, she has her unique opening. In her other palette, she actually has like flaps that open up and you can like bind them together. And this is how it looks. I mean, it's just okay. It's cardboard with which is fine with me. This part is once again just a sticker, but it adds like a three-dimensional texture to it. So I really don't mind this packaging. Let me take out the little condom thing they put in there. Did they? Oh. Fuck. The shadow broke all over my carpet. <gasps> My brand new jeans that I just got yesterday. Finally fucking found a pair that fits and now there's purple on it. What the fuck? There's a little bit of that shadow left that maybe we can use. I gotta go grab a vacuum before I step on this. But the rest of the palette does look very, very pretty. I will be 1000% honest with you though, this looks like a Morphe palette. And I'm not just saying that because that shadow fell out. Like, I'm really not that upset because hopefully they have good customer service, but it does look a lot like a Morphe palette, doesn't it? Hold on, before I grab the vacuum, let me find a Morphe palette. All right, I grabbed a few of them. Here's the Jaclyn Hill Volume 2, which I don't even know if I've opened yet. Oh, no, I guess I did. Not that the quality would be the same, but we do basically get all of these colors in this. Also, I don't suck Morphe's dick, but it did instantly remind me of a Morphe palette. Okay, then here is the 35i, which I've actually heard isn't the best quality. I've never actually used it. And here are these next to each other. Honestly, between both the Jaclyn and this palette, you could probably create any look that you could with a Pat McGrath one. And both of these together are way less than $78. I'm not trying to deter you from buying the Pat McGrath palette or take sales away from her, but if there's a dupe, I do want to let you know, because this is pricey. Also, I really hope they either give me a new one or give me credit or something. Oh my god, this is really staining my carpet. I need to go get my vacuum. <gasps> oh, I'm not getting my security deposit back. No way. Mother shit my ass. More like mother shit. All right, let's get back to business. But I do just want to feel a few of the shadows to see if they actually are good. Okay, so there's the matte. Let me feel this kind of glittery shade next to it. Oh my god, that is really pretty. It's got a beautiful shift to it. It goes from like tannish taupe to green to red. That is very, very 
very pretty. And then let me feel this mat right here. I mean, they do feel really good. Put that right there, beautiful. That right there, beautiful as well. And that right there, okay. I guess I will admit this is better quality than Morphe, at least with swatching. But if you build a Morphe shadow up, you probably could get there. Even though we did have a little bit of breakage, I'm still very excited to swatch and do a look with this bitch. You guys know the song, are you ready? It's swatch and time. <laughs> All right, and here we have the first two rows. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Like, these feel so fucking good. Like, premium quality. Like, the good Pat McGrath shit. Some of the shimmers are a bit chunky, so they don't really want to stick to my hand without a primer. But those mattes, oh my god. God, talk about fucking beautimous. I did try to swatch the purple that broke, and honestly, it looks a lot better on camera than it does in person. I'm not even mad that I don't have it anymore. I would honestly never use that. It's a really pretty, like, bluish purple, but then it's got a black undertone, and I don't fuck with those kinds of shadows, but the rest of them are so nice. Like, yeah, you probably could still dupe it with a different palette, but it's not gonna be this good a quality. This, to me, at least with swatching, is professional quality, so I do kind of understand the price. It's like they took somewhat basic shades that you could find in several other palettes, but really amped the quality up. So I'm still really pumped to use this palette. And here we have the bottom row. Once again, these shadows look and feel fucking stunning. The only complaint that I have is with this pinkish, like, rosy matte. It does look a little bit splotchy on my hand. I don't know if it'll perform that way on the eye, but when swatched, it really isn't that great. But these shimmers, oh my god, they are to die for. I have not really seen much like that, like, ever. I just fucking love chameleon shades, and these are definitely those. Like, this top one, it's green, it's bronze, it's a little bit of everything. It's just so unique and lovely. Not lovely enough to make me want to lick it, but I definitely want to spread it all over my eyeball. So let's go ahead and do just that and start into a look. So for primer, I'm going to go in with this Laura Mercier Hydrating Primer, as well as this Gerard Cosmetics BB Plus Illumination. I think I want kind of a glowy look. I saw the campaign images for this palette, and they were very, very pretty and simple looks, so I think I want to recreate those. And because there are so many damn shadows in this palette, we'll probably do one look on this side and another on this side. Oh, yes, look at that glow. I look like a fucking metal vibrator. Mmm. Then for foundation, I'm gonna go in with my all-time favorite Dior backstage. Oh my god. God, I just got foundation in my eye. That has never happened. Oh my God. Then for Consquealer, I'm gonna go in with a mixture of Bare Minerals Bare Skin with the Dior Forever Skin. I'm gonna give my face a little bit of a quick set with some Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. And then just to be safe, I'm actually gonna pack a little bit more Translucent Powder right under the eyes to catch any follow because I don't know with this palette. But to prime the eyes, I'm gonna go in with the Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas. I suppose we could probably take this little mirror thing off. Oh God, that's satisfying. It's like peeling off dead skin on a sunburn. But on this side, I think I want to do like a red glam eye. So let's first dip into this beautiful kind of mauve pink. And I'm going to place that right in the crease and blend it back and forth up towards the brow bone. Holy fuck, it like blends itself out. I like those kinds of shadows because lazy bitch. Mmm, yes, queen, I want more. I think the only thing this palette really is missing is like a light, light shade. Because I now have nothing to blend this shade out with, but I'm fine with that. I just think it could have been added. Like, one of these shimmers, specifically that one, could have easily been replaced with a really good light-colored matte. But I do really like this shadow. Oh my god, it's so fucking nice. Like, it effortlessly blended out. I've literally been going like that for maybe five or ten seconds, and it's perfect. Oh my god. Truthfully, though, there really aren't many transition shades in here, so I actually think I'm gonna put this same color on the other eye as well. We'll still switch the look up, but this is kind of like our base shade. Oh, yeah. Yes, bitch. That is just absolutely pleasant to work with. Like, I could totally picture doing somebody's makeup and pulling this palette out, which to me is a really good sign because some palettes I can't picture using on people. There is that shade. What do you think? I think it is so stunning. I'm just gonna give this brush a little bit of a color switch and dip into, let's say, this purple one right here. God, there really is a lot of kickback with this. Not necessarily follow, like, there's nothing underneath my eyes, but I do feel like a little bit is wasted. But you can easily sweep the pigment back into the little pan and use it for later. Oh, that's a pretty color too. Not the most like vibrant or pigmented, but it still is pretty. Let me just keep packing it on. Oh, mama. So I will be the first to admit that shadow, though it is pretty, it really isn't the best. I don't know if it's my primer, if it's my brush or what, but it does seem the slightest bit patchy. Not too bad on camera, but in person, I just see little missing spots. I don't know if you can see that. Let me apply some with my finger. Oh, see, but even when 
I dip my finger in it, it's patchy on my finger. So I think it's just the shadow. However, when you do kind of finger pack this on, it definitely does pack a punch. But we're left with the slightest bit of fallout under there. So I'm really, really glad that I put this powder down. And then with that same brush I was using, I'm just gonna go back and forth along the crease line to kind of smoke that color out and bring it up. I do still think it's pretty, but it's not the best that we've seen from Miss Patty M. Just to see if it'll blend out, I'm gonna dip into this red right here. It is a shimmer, but I wanna see if maybe I apply some, if the shimmer will disappear and I'll be left with a reddish matte. No, it's just kind of taking away that purple. I'm gonna go back in with a little bit more purple because it did dust away with my brush, which really, really scares me that it'll fly off during the day and we'll end up with like nothing on our eyes. We don't wanna end up in the middle of the day with bald ass eyelids. And I really don't have much more I can do with that upper lid. So let's go ahead and finger bang some shimmer on there. I think I wanna first start off with this beautiful purple and I just realized there's actually names on the back, but I'm still not gonna use them. Let's dip into this Barney Butte and I'm just gonna squeeze that on right there. Oh my God, that is such a beautiful combination. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Excuse me, I have to go change my dainties now. No, but this does look magnificently beautiful. I don't know how it's reading on camera, but oh. And it's actually laying down very, very nicely, even though there's no concealer or anything for it really to stick to. The only thing is that it is difficult to be precise with your finger. So let me try going in with a nice dense flat brush and see if it picks anything up. Actually, that works just as good as the finger did. There, that is so fucking pretty. Then I wanna dip into this shadow right next to it. It does kind of have like a greenish undertone, so it scares me a little bit. But let's try placing a little bit right there. Oh God, this is not gonna happen because it's so chunky and is going everywhere. Let me try a little bit with my finger. Here we go. Oh my God, ah, it's getting in my mouth. So that shadow, you might wanna either use a concealer or a glitter glue because it really isn't sticking into place. It's definitely falling out under there and in my mouth and it's probably on my teeth. So that's not cute. But when it's like really, really pressed in, it doesn't look that bad. In fact, I quite like it. Then to put on the inner corner, I'm gonna go in with this beautiful multi-chrome right here and let's place that right about there. Ooh, that is so fucking stunning. I will say though, a lot of these, once they're on the eyes, they do look very similar. Oh, but I didn't try this one right here. So I'm just gonna take a little bit and kind of take it right there on the outer corner and see if anything shows up. Kind of, probably not because I've got an inch of makeup on my eyeball. Oh wait, no, there it is. I'm actually gonna take it kind of all over the lid and just cover it and mix it with everything. Okay, I am gonna be honest. Even though I've got 50 fucking different shadows on my eyelid, I still love the way this looks. It's not heavy feeling. None really fell into my eyeball, so it's not burning. This is such a fucking simple look that I could easily achieve with any drugstore palette, but it was so effortless to achieve this, and you can just tell that the quality is different. Let's dust that shit away and see if we're left with any pigment that stained the eye. All dusted away. I'm so glad I put that powder down. But now for the lower lash, I'm gonna dip into this pink and then smoke that out with that purple. All right, easy peasy. So there is that look. Of course, I don't have liner, lashes, or mascara or any of that jizzy jazz on, but I really like this look. It's like purpley plum grunge and just, oh, right up my alley. I've not had anything up my alley for quite a while, if you know what I mean. So for the other side, I think I'm gonna go in with the brown and kind of use that like I did with the purple. So let me start with that right here on the outer corner and just place it all over the lid. Ooh, that's nice. It doesn't really seem quite as patchy as the purple, but it's not perfect. Let me try blending it out a little bit more and see if we can get rid of those patches. Oh shit. Yes, it looks great now. Let me just build that up a little bit. The color is actually quite a bit softer on the eye than it is in the pan. But now that we're kind of building it up, I think we actually could get it probably as deep and saturated as what we see here. Once again, extremely easy to use. This basically does all of the work for you. Look at that. That was literally 10 or 15 seconds of blending. Not much at all. That is so nice. Again, I don't know how it's registering on camera. I will have to blend it out a little bit better, but so far. I kind of fucking love this palette, despite the shit falling out and ruining my carpet. And then for this eye, I really don't want to cover up all of that brown because I think it's so pretty, so I'm not gonna do a cut crease today. Like, what happened to me? I think I want to do, like, a light to dark look, so let me start with this on my inner corner. And... <gasps> 
fuck me up. It is literally like liquid metal. I didn't even need to cut the crease. It is covering up that brown. It's so pigmented. Damn, that was a good choice. Next, I'm gonna go in with this like orangey bronze and let's take that right in the middle and kind of blend it with that shade that I just put down. <gasps> That's really pretty too. <laughs> and then on two other fingers, I'm gonna take this red right here as well as this red. And I'm gonna kind of go back and forth with them and make my own little mixture. Okay, so honestly, I don't love those red shades. I feel like you probably would need to do maybe a cut crease to use them. They might look great over the purple just by themselves, but I don't love them in combination with this. At first I did, but because they have that shift, they kind of turn weird colors on you. Let me just see what some of this really popping beautiful yellow gold. Let me put that right there. Oh my god, that just is like the cherry on top of this look. These are definitely very, very pretty, extremely creamy, super duper pigmented, but I still don't know that this is worth $80. Then for the lower lash, I'm gonna start with this pink and then finish up with that brown, just like the top lash. And here we are with our final two looks. They're very, very simple, but so pretty. And shit, they were easy, my goodness. So my thoughts on this pattern palette. Do I recommend it? Honestly, if you do like these colors, then yes. But does that mean I think it's worth the price? Oh, I don't know about that one. $78 does seem a bit steep, but you actually do get quite a few unique colored shades in here. Or at least they're unique if you don't have our other palettes where there's repeats. I think that the packaging could have been way better. This does seem very, very cheap for the quality of these. So now I do kind of understand why they said that aspect of it was garbage, because now I do have to agree. It's like putting Pat McGrath shadows in like wet and wild packaging. You do just have to be a little bit careful because this purple, which is one of only what, three mattes that we get, it can be a little bit splotchy. It wasn't impossible to work with, but I do think that this primer that I used really helped. The brown was stunning, and it's the kind of brown that can kind of fade off when you blend it out, so you can put it on, smoke it out, and then apply a little bit more to, like, the lid, and it'll look like two separate shadows. This rosy kind of mauve was absolutely excellent. The shimmers, I don't really recommend layering them like I did. I think they're kind of like a one-and-done deal, but that doesn't mean you can't. They're not uncomfortable. There's been no fallout at all. All of the fallout that was there completely dusted away. Actually, no, there is a little bit of residual glitter here and there, but it's not bad at all. So do I recommend this palette? I do. It's just, is it really worth the price for you? I don't know that I've ever really felt as though a palette this expensive is actually worth it, but I'm really not mad at it. Like, I could totally see myself using the shit out of this. Just like that one review said, it really is the perfect sampling of Pat McGrath's shadows. I just wish that there was maybe one or two more mattes in this, because a lot of the shimmers I do think kind of look the same once they're applied to the eye. This isn't one of those palettes that you're going to be able to do a hundred different matte looks with because you don't have that much to choose from. I think the shimmers are definitely where this stands out. And so if you're okay with one of these more neutral colors and just slapping a shimmer on, then you probably will really like this palette. It's so simple and easy to work with. The only real negative that I have here, other than the slight splotchiness of this and the fact that that is completely fucking destroyed, is the price tag. Yes, it's Pat McGrath, so you are going to end up paying a lot, but for like a cardboard palette that it just seems a little bit high, but the formulas for the most part really are pretty good. So yes, you're able to see what it looks like. I have had this on for a couple hours now and it doesn't look like it's faded at all. Everything looks really, really good except for the few flecks of glitter here and there. So yes, please let me know down in the comments below if you have this palette. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Why? And thank you so much for being here. I always love having you. But yes, there you go. Don't forget, I did start a second channel called Poplux Live where I'll start doing live streams from now on. Please feel free to join us over there. I'll link it to you down below. And if you'd like to support me and my channel a little bit more, please feel free to join us on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash poplux. There you get videos a day early, you get Patreon-only content, plus best part, it is cheap, fun, and fancy, just like me. Whew, breathe. But like always, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including Black Ice, which does change from black to white, is available at thepoplux.com. Also, my latest album, Kiss of Fame, is available everywhere online that music is sold. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting them. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at OfficialNady, and you can follow me online at thepoplex.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye!